Texas Governor Greg Abbott says he's stopping short of declaring an invasion by illegal aliens. There's a lot of reasons for this. Namely, nobody knows if declaring an invasion would actually work. About half a dozen border sheriffs asked the governor to declare an invasion. That would give local law enforcement and state National Guard the right to deport illegal immigrants. Abbott's move comes ahead of President Biden's meeting with the Mexican president. The relationship between the two is, shall we say, icy. Chris Landau is here with us. He represented the United States in Mexico during the last administration. Mr. Ambassador, we appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Uh, do you understand why the governor's sort of tiptoeing up to this line uh, and says that the National Guard will bring people to the border but not declare an invasion, not deport them? Absolutely. And first of all, thanks for having me on to talk about this issue. It, it's so important. And the, uh, you know, I can understand the frustration of the Texas governor with tens of thousands of people pouring over our border every day. And Texas is right there on the front line. Uh, so, you know, he, he's got to do something to protect his own state. And it's really the responsibility of the federal government to do this. And, you know, state governors are now kind of just put in this awkward position of trying to deal with something that has traditionally and frankly, constitutionally been a federal responsibility, but they have no choice, Leland. I mean, it's just, it's very much like what your previous guest said in the previous segment, that these folks have just decided not to enforce the law that they don't like. It's outrageous in terms of our constitutional structure. Right. But we've got the Texas governor sort of in this I don't know, sort of weird, weird legal limbo, right? Because he's saying that the Texas Department of Public Safety and the, the National Guard is going to bring people to the border, bring illegal immigrants back to the port of entry. Right. They're not going to deport them, and he's not formally declaring an invasion under Article 4 of the Constitution, which brings up a whole slew of things. Can he have it both ways? We'll see, Leland. I mean, it's a very tricky line that he is trying to walk. I mean, God bless him for trying to figure yeah. out ways to deal with this. Uh, but, you know, immigration is a federal responsibility. But, you know, what do you do when the federal government is not enforcing our federal laws? That's the problem that the governor has. And so he's trying to use all the tools available to him under the general police powers of the state of Texas you know, which, again, have not traditionally been construed to include deporting people to other countries. That seems more like it crosses the line into immigration enforcement. Right, but, which you'd have you know, to try, try to try yeah. to grab back federal federal powers from the Constitution, creates all sorts of the legal issues. I'm interested, you just talk about, about a federal issue, federal to federal, right? The Mexican government could do a lot about this. The U.S. government could do a lot right. about uh, this problem. Uh, president Biden's going to host the Mexican president July 12th. That's after the Mexican president snubbed uh, Mr. Biden out in California for the big uh, summit. Help us understand why the Mexican government has become so obstinate and so unwilling to help. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, Mexico traditionally has been a pro-immigration country. Frankly, it was remarkable that President Trump got a level of cooperation from Mexico that was unprecedented in our history. I mean, Mexico was actually working with us to try to stem these flows, which again, are not good for anybody to have these massive flows of people trying to come in illegally. Worst of all, for the people who are actually coming in because they are being trafficked. And we just saw 53 people die in a trailer in San Antonio. Uh, so the idea that this is some kind of humanitarian assistance uh, to, to these people to, you know, to welcome them in is just completely wrong. Um, you know, so I think now with President Trump gone, the, the Mexicans don't think they really have to lift a finger to try to do this, to try to do anything about it. So you served two years as the U.S. ambassador to Mexico. Are there things that the Mexicans could do to radically change what's happening uh, at the border? Sure. Listen, the Mexicans have a southern border of their own. I mean, one of the interesting phenomena in recent years is that the majority of people in, in, in some years of coming to our southern border in recent years have actually been non-Mexicans. They're Cubans, Venezuelans, uh, Chinese, Indians, Bangladeshis. Uh, certainly with respect to those people, Mexico can enforce its own migration laws because these people are not coming into Mexico legally either. Hmm. It's much trickier for Mexico to try to keep its own people in. Yeah. But what, you know, what they were working with us very closely during the Trump administration was enforcing their own laws, which again, 
you know, created a little bit of it, took off the pressure on us at the border because then we could focus more on, on other people. Last question. I got about 30 seconds. There seems to be this riff sure. with Ken Salazar, the new ambassador, uh, the guy who has your old job down uh, in Mexico, that he's too cozy uh, with the Mexicans. Why would that be? You know, look, I, I think it's a hard job. And, uh, you know, there's a temptation, I think, to want to try to uh, work closely with the host government. But ultimately, you represent your own country when you're abroad and you have to represent your own interests. I, I thought it was interesting that the New York Times of all uh, yeah. places published this uh, this unflattering story on the ambassador. Yeah. He's got a hard job. I mean, a, a lot of times mm -hmm. these are not policies that he implemented. They're policies that the Biden administration in Washington implemented, and he's kind of left holding the bag, trying to work with the Mexicans. And so, I, you know, I think, again, I think he's been used as a fall guy for the, the broader failings of the Biden administration. Well, and, and that may explain why the New York Times published the story, depending on who leaked it to him in the administration. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, it's good to see you. Thank you, sir. My pleasure, Leland. Thanks for having yeah. me on. Pleasure's all ours. Thanks for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.